Okay, Le Chatelet's principle, I'm not going to write the definition down. Um, I can do that later for you. But um, we're, just, we're wanting to be able to apply Le Chatelet's principle. So we got a reaction up here. Um, it tells us, uh, is this endothermic or exothermic, the reaction? I don't know, I guess. <laughs> Uh, if it's in, within the equation uh, and it's on the left side, uh, you have to put heat into it for it to react. If it's on the right side, you're getting energy out during the reaction. So endothermic reaction is what this is. And that's just, you don't have to know that. You just have to know where the energy is going to be located. Okay? So, the first thing. When we add, uh, when we add heat... Let's say we add heat to this reaction. Okay, so this is our scenario. Let's say it's at a certain temperature, and what we're going to do is we're going to add heat. Right. When we add heat to it, does it drive the reaction to make more product, or what do you think less product will be made? More, more product's going to be made, right? So as we add more and more heat, more product is going to be made. Alright? So, that's shifting it how? To the right. Alright? So, in this one, it's going to shift to the right. And the K will become larger. Any questions with that? Does that make sense? So it's on the left-hand side. The uh, energy is going into the reaction. We add heat. Adding heat will cause these two to react more, to make more product. We make more product. We got product over reactant. We're going to have a bigger K. Right? So the second scenario, okay, is this. Is we're going to... Um, Lower the temperature. How's that going to affect the reaction? It's going to shift to the left. So if I take, and this is the way I like to do it, and you guys can um, do it however you want, but I always like putting an arrow. And if, uh, if my arrow goes up, like here, if I say it goes up, energy goes up, then it's going to proceed to the right. Okay? If I say, you know, I don't want to do that, but actually it goes down, like in this scenario, temperature goes down, okay? What it's going to do is going to take energy out and it's going to proceed to the left. So this one, when you take energy out, it's going to shift to left. Okay? And what happens to the constant? Okay, it will become lower or smaller. Any questions on that? Mm -hmm. So, adding... Now, what if we have a scenario, and we'll see it. You guys will do kind of a little assignment here today, and we'll take you very long. But let's say this, is, this was exothermic. So let's say that uh, the energy is on the right side. If we add energy to it, where is it going to shift? Left. Left. If we take energy away, it's going to shift right. right. That makes sense. So if, if this number was actually over on the product side, it would have the opposite effect. We add heat, take heat away. Any questions you have with heat? And so what happens, you're, you're just adding stress to the system and it wants to relieve that stress. So that's kind of how it does it. Okay, any questions on that? All right. Second thing here um, we can look at... Uh, and I'm going to erase this information here so I don't have to rewrite things out. So, um, catalyst. You guys remember catalyst from last 
chapter right. It speeds up the reaction. This one's going to be really easy for you guys to say which way it's going to shift. If we add a catalyst, Nothing doesn't change. The doesn't doesn't shift left or right. Okay. So when we have that happen, is the, there's no change in uh, the reaction. It just speeds up the forward and reverse reaction. And if we speed up both sides, the rates going back and forth, and the products formed and products uh, a reactant tree formed will not change. So it has no effect on equilibrium. Just the rate. It just affects the rate, how quick it reaches equilibrium. Questions of that? Oh, that's, that was pretty easy. Catalyst, no effect. So if it says we add a catalyst, the first thing you'd say, no effect. There will be no effect on... Uh, what we have whatsoever, okay? Alright, C. Adding reactants and products, okay? Addition, addition uh, or subtraction of reactants and products. This one's going to be really easy. Okay, so we'll, this, this will be really quick, really fast, because we've already done this. If I add more CH4, then what happens to Q? Q becomes lower. If it's lower, which way is it going to shift? Right. right. If I add more CO, what happens to the... Initially, what happens to, to the Q? It's greater. So to get back at equilibrium, it's going to shift left. Does that make sense? All right. All right. What if we take away CO? What if we take away carbon monoxide? Which way is it going to shift? To the right. Because what we're doing is we're making this side smaller. So we're making our product over reactant smaller, so it has to shift. So guess what? Uh, they do in engineering. Chemical engineering, if they want to make more product, what do you do? You take away your product. You take it out of the reaction. You go ahead and pull it out. You make more. Pull it out. Make some more. Pull it out. And so then they use um, all of their resources when they do that. Right? So there's too many scenarios talk about when we talk about addition and subtraction of uh, products and reactants. You just have to know how that's going to affect Q. If you know how it affects Q, then you can decide which way it shifts, left or right. Any, any questions or comments that you guys have on that? Alright, so we have adding heat, adding heat energy. We have uh, if we add or take away uh, our reactants or products, which way it's going to shift? All right. So then we've got this thing called pressure that we want to take a look at. So uh, how does pressure affect going one way or the other? So I'm going to erase this. I'm going to put D down. Right, it's going to go the other direction. So whatever you add to one side, 
it need to compensate for that, it's going to have to make more of the other side. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And it, yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. So whatever side I add to, it's going to shift the opposite direction. Okay. And whatever whatever I take away, it's going to shift toward that side. Okay. Yep. Very good. Yep. That's the way it's going to work. Okay. Am uh, I on letter D? Mm -hmm. Okay. So D. All right. Pressure. So let's say we have a container and, and, and we're going to increase the pressure of the gas inside the container. All right? Uh, we're just going to um, increase that pressure by making volume smaller. Okay? Take the volume, push it in. We're not adding any gas. We're not taking any gas out because if we were adding gas, it would be shifting just like our concentrations do. We were adding more CH4 gas, that's adding more of, it, of that concentration. So pressure, it's like, hey, I'm going to reduce the volume. So let's say one scenario is reduced volume, which would cause what to happen to the pressure? Increase. <coughs> so here's what happens. If we increase the pressure, for the way for this to handle that stress, it's going to shift to the side that lowers the pressure. That's going to reduce the pressure. So we've got four moles of gas on this side. And over here we've got two moles of gas. You guys agree with that? The more moles, the more pressure. So if I increase the pressure, it's going to want to reduce that pressure, the effects of that pressure. So which way will it shift to reduce the effects of that pressure? Will it shift to the right, or will it shift to the left? All right, but we have four moles. So for more moles, more pressure. Less moles, less pressure. And I told you it's wanting to shift to create a less pressure. Shift to the left. Does that make sense? It's like, okay, we're going to add more pressure, and so this side has four moles, this side has two moles, and it, this side says, we've got too many moles here. We need to reduce how many moles we have, and so we'll, or the, what we have, and it's going to shift it to the left. Now, this does not affect the equilibrium constant. Okay? It has no effect on the, only temperature has effect on the equilibrium constant. So if I add more pressure, it's going to shift it to the left. Okay? All right? Um, so on that one, uh, we would say shifts towards the side with less moles. Now, what if there are equal number of moles on both sides? Where's the shift going to be? No shift. No shift. Because if that side, right side was two and left side is two, it has no effect. There's, I mean, there's no way it can relieve its pressure and the stress. So it won't. It'll stay the same. Okay? And then the other one would be if we what? We would um, increase the volume. This is P to decrease. Okay. So if the volume's decreasing, you're allowing more space. If you allow more space, it's what it's going to do to get that pressure back up is create more moles. So that's it's going to shift right. In this example, it's shifting right. Okay. So on the reasoning on this one would be, it would shift toward the side of the reaction with larger number of moles. Okay, so I'm, all I'm going to do is put this arrow down here, 
and at the end it would be larger number of moles. So if our top reaction we did and we reduced the pressure by increasing the volume, um, it would shift to the right. It would shift to the side that has more moles to create more pressure. So, so it's always trying to relieve its stress along the way um, and how that goes. So we're going to have you do, uh, we're going to do this together as a group and then uh, you guys will predict what you think just on your notes. And then um, we'll see what you, if you understood our discussion or not, okay? Um, you have your book. We'll look at a couple examples in the back or in the back of that section 13. Uh, tomorrow we'll be basically reviewing. Um, just need, need time to digest uh, stuff we went through this week and try to get it figured out for the test on Tuesday. Okay, with block scheduling we kind of pressed on when we can have tests and that, and we definitely don't want to wait till Thursday. Okay, I, I don't want to get into new material and then confuse it with what we're doing now. So. If you've been keeping up with the assignments, handing those in, double checking them, double checking answers as I give them out like today and yesterday, um, definitely need to keep up with that.